Welcome. All right, so in this case, what I'd like to do is show you how to solve secant squared of x minus secant of x um, equals 2. Well, again, to do a problem like this, what we're going to have to do is uh, obviously simplify this. So to do that, I'm going to want to rewrite this and in terms of um, a factoring. But before I can even do that, I've got to set this equal to 0. So if I have secant squared of x minus secant of x minus 2 equals 0. And it's really important to make sure that we set it equal to 0 when we apply our factoring. So therefore, we can apply the zero product, fact, um, zero product property. So again, to factor this, I'm going to forget about secant for a second. And I'm just going to look at this and say, all right, how, could I, how would I factor x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0? Well, this one's not that bad. So I'm going to kind of do it very quickly. And now you can set up, your, um, now you can set up the zero product property. So in this case, I'm see I'm going to use the same thing, but now it's just going to be in terms of secants. So I have secant minus 2 times secant of x plus 1 equals 0. Now I solve both of these for 0. So I have secant of x equals um, minus 2 equals 0, and secant of x uh, plus 1 equals 0. So now solving, I have secant of x equals 2 and secant of x equals negative 1. Now, as far as evaluating for the unit circle, it's much easier to evaluate for the reciprocal functions as far as cosine and sine and tangent than rather dealing with secant, um, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So what I'll do is I'm going to rewrite this in terms of its reciprocal, which would be the cosine of x equals 1 half. And then here would be the cosine of x equals negative 1. So now what I need to do is evaluate for my values of x where when cosine equals 1 half and when cosine equals negative 1 half. So I go back to my unit circle. And I say, all right, so when are my values um, going to equal 1 half and are going to equal negative 1? Well, by looking at my points here, I know that this first angle, pi thirds, that point is, is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So since the x coordinate is equal to 1 half, I know that's going to be a solution. So I can say x equals my angle, not 1 half, but my angle, pi over 3. But is that the only solution between 0 and 2 pi on my unit circle where uh, the cosine, the x coordinate is equal to 1 half? And the answer is no. Now, first of all, again, I, the solutions that we're working through is finding all the solutions. But I'm going to start with finding the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So to do this, we need to determine, well, where, where is it going to be positive again? Well, if I go to the next 2 thirds, well, now it's going to be negative 1 half. Down here, it's still going to be negative 1 half. But now it's going to be this angle over here, which is a direct reflection. So if this is pi 1 thirds, that would be 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. So my two solutions right now is pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But that's not the whole equation. The only equation also asks us for the solution when cosine of x equals negative 1. Well, we know if this is 1 comma 0, then this is going to be negative 1 comma 0. So that angle is going to be pi. Now, that would be all the solutions between 0 and, two, 0 and 2 pi, which covers the whole unit circle. But if I ask you to find all of the solutions, there's a couple things we need to look at with this. First of all, we see that here is our first solution. Well, if I want to get to the next solution that covers this, I'm going to have to go all the way around the circle back again. So I'm going to be adding 2 pi. So x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi. Because we obviously know that if here it is, if I add 2 pi, that's a coterminal angle. It's going to have the, it's, you're going to be able to evaluate it for the same amount, which is 1 half. And you can just keep on adding coterminal angles. Then I get to the next angle. Well, all right, so here's my first angle. Again, I can just add 2 pi and 2 pi to this. So therefore, I can say 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi. But we can add more than 2 pi more than once. So I need to make sure I add my variable, which in this case, I'll use r. And that just is just telling us we can add 2 pi as many times as we would like to. And then lastly, we have the my angle pi, which again, to get the next solution where x equals where my cosine of x equals negative 1, I have to again add 2 pi to it. So it would be uh, pi plus 2 pi r. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you evaluate um, for your points for your trigonometric function using the unit circle. Thanks.